Hi, welcome to Nice Fire and Food, where we make extreme food extremely easy. My name is Dylan Starr, and today we have a really big episode for you. Dun, 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 dun. We're making two things. We're going to do a chicken roulade stuffed with Italian cheese, basil, and prosciutto, wrapped in prosciutto and baked. And we're also going to do a creamy polenta made with a homemade creme fraiche with Kalamata olives, sun-dried tomatoes, and capers. It's going to be delicious. You're going to love it. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and take care of all of our raw chicken product because it's icky and let's just get it out of the way. So we have the chicken breast. What we wanna do is cut the tenderloin out if it has one because it's excessive and you don't need it in the dish. I have a chicken breast that I already pounded out, but I wanted to show it to you. This side right here, here, let me move the ceramic. up. This side right here is the side that the skin wasn't on. This is the side we want to be on the outside when we roll it up. So, what I did is I just put the chicken breast in between the two pieces of saran wrap and pounded it out with my handy dandy mallet. And that's really all you need to do. Three or four really good smacks and you'll be done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stuff the breast. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this piece of saran wrap, throw it in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stuff it with two of these beautiful basil leaves. They smell fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I'm just gonna go like that. And then we're gonna take some Italian cheeses. I'm using Asiago, Romano, and Parmesan in a blend. And you just put, you know, a fair amount of cheese in here. You don't need a ton because it's, it's gonna either melt out or fall out while you're rolling it. Now, sometimes when you pound out the chicken, little pieces will come off like this and you can just tuck them in. So I like to roll the fat end first and leave this end at the bottom because it's less chicken that I have to connect together with the prosciutto. So we're just going to go like this and we're just going to tuck it. Make sure we got our basil and our cheese in there. Okay, beautiful. So there we've got this all rolled up. And now we're going to take this prosciutto, which is a ham. It comes from the leg of a pig. It's kind of this area of the pig right here. And what it does is they cold smoke it, so you can actually eat it pretty much raw. You can eat it just the way it is from the deli. It's really good with melon. Oh my goodness, you should try it in a melon salad sometime. It's awesome. Really good with cantaloupe, honeydew, chicken, of course. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll that. I'm going to use this little piece to kind of cover up this area right here. It's kind of like patchwork because the stuff's really thin and it, and it breaks really easy. So you just get several pieces and just cover up all the exposed chicken. And the beauty of using prosciutto with chicken is, especially with the white meat, it locks in all the juiciness and all the flavor of the chicken and keeps it from drying out too much. And I like to take little pieces and stuff it into the ends. Stuff it like a chicken butt. <laughs> get it all in there. I know, I'm silly. So here, oh, there's an exposed piece right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll put, just put the last little bit right there. Okay, so now that we have this all rolled up, nice and pretty, you can set it right into a baking dish at about 350 degrees and bake it until when you squeeze it like this, it's firm and all the juices running from the chicken are clear and then you know that it's done. If you have a thermometer, you can temp, just go right in through here Temp it, 165 is finished. You can pull it out of your oven at 155, 160, and it'll carry over to 165 in about five minutes. So that's all done. We're gonna go ahead and pop that in the oven and work on our polenta. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and make our creamy polenta. So what I did is I took our polenta and I mixed it in some water. So that way we can start to get it softening. And I'm going to add it to two cups of boiling water. And what I like to do, now you might be too scared to do this, it's kind of ballsy on my end, but there we go. I'm gonna get most of the cornmeal I'll pull into out of there. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir this occasionally for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then once it's thick, like grits or cream of wheat consistency, we're gonna go ahead and add our sun-dried tomatoes, our calmata olives, and our capers, and our creme fraiche. It'll be great. 
Okay, so our polenta is all cooked up now. We stirred it a lot. It's looking beautiful. Now it's time to season it and get all of our last ingredients in it. First, what I like to do is add a bunch of salt. Polenta is really, really bland. I use kosher salt. It's my favorite. I like how you get the nice big granules. And don't be scared to use a bunch because, like I said, polenta is like potatoes. It's super, super bland. Then we're going to add a little bit of black pepper, probably about, oh, a tablespoon's worth. And then I really like to use this stuff called granulated garlic. I like it better than garlic powder because it doesn't get all clumpy and hard. Each of the little, if you check it out, each of the little pieces of garlic is all totally granulated like salt. It's really nice. It's really easy to use. Here's our capers. Some sun-dried tomatoes. I chopped them in a julienne and then rough chopped them from there. So they're just little, little chunks of sun-dried tomato. There's some Kalamata olives I cut in quarters. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda get that in there a little bit. Okay, and then this is homemade creme fraiche. I made this with one cup of heavy whipping cream and two tablespoons of buttermilk. You leave it in a metal bowl overnight, room temperature covered with saran wrap and it's absolutely beautiful. It tastes um, a lot like sour cream and yogurt mix. And in fact, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of making this, you can do a half and half ratio of yogurt, uh, plain yogurt and sour cream, and it tastes exactly the same. I wanted to make the real thing though today. So I'm just gonna add all that in. Okay, actually I'm thinking I'm gonna get my whisk out of here. It's kind of in my way. I'll just use my spoon to mix this up. All right. See how that creme fraiche just makes it all nice and creamy and delicious. And you're going to get a really nice tart tanginess from the Kalamata olives and the capers. And then the sun-dried tomatoes really sweeten up the dish. It's very, very, very nice. Okay, so now that this is all done, we can go ahead and plate it up with our roulades. We'll have to pull them out of the oven. Okay, so we got our polenta all plated up. It's absolutely delicious. And now we're gonna go ahead and slice up our chicken roulade. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one right here on my cutting board. Set that right there for now. Now this is hot, so you're gonna wanna be careful and use your tongs to hold the meat. So we're just gonna go ahead and slice some little pieces. I'm going to use my professional cook's hands of steel here. There we go. Perfect. Ugh, it's a little warm. All right. So we just want to take these, and I like to scoop them up with my knife. And just go right like that. Ooh. There we go. <clears throat> And what's great about this is you can see all the beautiful basil and cheese and everything that's just right there, right inside of the wrap. It's absolutely delicious. Chicken roulade is the best ever. You should definitely try it when you have time. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dylan Starr. This is Knives Fire and Food, bringing you extreme food, extremely easy. And don't forget to check us out at knivesfirefood.com. Peace.